we're showing about that 100 to 110 degree Fahrenheit mark on the back. Maybe we peaked. Looks like, oh, can we get to 115? I saw 115. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4070 Super GPU. Gigabyte did send me the sample, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this GPU or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. On the side, we can learn about this particular model. It's their 4070 Super OC12G. And on the back, they walk you through a couple of key features here. So we have our wind force cooling system with triple fan design. We have our RGB fusion integration and we have a metal back plate. We can see all the included ports, three display ports and one HDMI port right there and a couple additional product specific features. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, you'll see our product literature consisting of a quick start guide and warranty information. Make sure to register within the first 30 days to take advantage of that four year warranty. Yes, you hear me correctly, four year warranty on this GPU. Next, you'll see power supply, adapter cable if needed followed by the GPU itself. Let's look at the GPU in more detail. Looking at the card up close, you'll notice our triple fan design on the front with Gigabyte's logo and branding. Take a look at that. We'll flip it up to the top. You'll see our heatsink, GeForce RTX in white. Gigabyte logo is gonna light up and illuminate here. Power cable connector right there, dead center. Here's a look from the side profile. The other side, get a feel for how thick this card is. You'll see our HDMI port down here, followed by three display ports. See it from all different angles. Metal backplate, Gigabyte GeForce RTX branding here. Got a piece of plastic film to remove that's protecting the card during shipment. But get a feel for the size of this and how it looks from all different angles. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in, power it up and try it out. All right, so we have the GPU on our test bench installed and it's been under a stress test for over 30 minutes. You'll see that it's currently consuming 220 watts of power. That's gonna be the max power draw with this GPU. Also in regards to temps, again, 100% load, stress for over 30 minutes. We're peaking at around that 58, 59 degree Celsius mark under a full load. Keep in mind, if you see results a little bit higher, that's gonna be fine, because you'll notice our test bench is open air, and we have a fairly cool space down here as well, too, in regards to ambient air temperature. But everything's operating well within spec and range. Now, just for fun, let's grab that thermal cam, and let's check out our cable connector. Flare cam's fired up. We're showing about that 100 to 110 degree Fahrenheit mark on the back. Maybe we peaked. Looks like, oh, can we get to 115? I saw 115. 115 degrees Fahrenheit on the back right there. We'll grab some more data points for you all throughout. But looking at our connector under that full load, 220 watts coming through here. We're in the mid to high 90s right at the connector. Not bad for a single cable pushing 220 watts. And from the other side, similar story here. The hottest points are gonna be the fan bearings. Mid 80s. And we peak at around 90 on the front of the card. And same story up at the top. Looking at our connector. Peaking at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. How does this GPU stack up against the competition? Well, in today's video, the competition is the Zotac RTX 4070 Super and the Zotac RTX 4070 Ti Super. So that's what we're gonna be comparing our Gigabyte GPU to. And we'll be looking at some other common metrics as well as benchmarking from video games to get a better feel for the performance 
of this card. First thing we have to do though is put everything in perspective. So we're gonna go over the cost of each GPU. You'll see that the most affordable GPU is gonna be our Zotac 4070 Super by a couple of dollars compared to our 4070 Super from Gigabyte. And then lastly, our most expensive card is gonna be the 4070 Ti Super from Zotac. Next, we'll talk about length. That's gonna be measured in millimeters. The 4070 Super from Zotac comes in at 234 millimeters, whereas our Gigabyte GPU comes in at 300 millimeters, which is just seven millimeters less in length than our 4070 Ti Super. In regards to width, We'll measure this in slots. So the Zotac 4070 Super takes up two slots. Our Gigabyte 4070 Super takes up two and a half slots, which is the same as the 4070 Ti Super. Moving right along to power, you saw that in full display in this video already. Our Gigabyte 4070 Super consumes up to 220 watts of power. The same for the Zotac 4070 Super. Both are gonna be about 65 watts less than the 4070 Ti Super. Next, in regards to VRAM, this is all GDDR6X memory. We have the same 12 gigabyte capacity for both 4070 models, and you'll notice that's four gigabytes less than our TI Super. Next, we have our boost clock measured in megahertz. You'll see that the Gigabyte 4070 Super comes in a little bit faster than our Zotac 4070 Super. And as expected, the 4070 Ti Super has the highest boost clock speed. Moving right along to CUDA cores, you'll see both 4070 versions have 7,168 CUDA cores, which is about 500 CUDA cores less than the Ti Super. Now let's look at gaming. We'll be covering some popular titles and looking at the average FPS that we were able to benchmark across 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolution at 2160p. First up, looking at Modern Warfare 1080p, Zotac coming in at 191 FPS, followed by our Gigabyte GPU at 195 FPS, and the TI bringing it up with 298 FPS. 1440p, as you would expect, as the resolution increases, we'll see a decrease in FPS values. Zotac coming in at 140 FPS, Gigabyte 143, and the TI at 258. Next, at 4K for Modern Warfare 3, Zotac coming in at 87, Gigabyte at 93, and the TI at 197 FPS. Moving right along to Forza 5 1080p, you'll see 170 FPS for Zotac, 176 FPS for Gigabyte, and 191 FPS for the TI. 1440p, as expected, the FPS values are gonna drop as the resolution increases. 146 FPS for Zotac, 152 FPS for Gigabyte, and 166 FPS for the TI. Full 4K showing a similar story here. This was really interesting that all three got the same average FPS of 80. Next, Rainbow Six coming in at 1080p. We got 295 FPS for Zotac, 306 for our Gigabyte GPU, and 331 for the TI. 1440p brings us 200 FPS for the Zotac, 208 FPS for our Gigabyte GPU, and 231 FPS for RTI. Full 4K brings us 104 FPS for Zotac, 108 for Gigabyte, and 126 for the TI. Moving right along to Assassin's Creed 1080p, you'll see 163 FPS on average for Zotac, 170 FPS on average for Gigabyte, and 183 FPS on average for the TI. 1440p tells a similar story here, 120 FPS for Zotac, 132 FPS for Gigabyte, and 144 FPS for the TI. And full 4K resolution, 2160p, 59 FPS for Zotac, 79 FPS, for gigabyte and 90 FPS for the TI. Far Cry 6 1080p, this is gonna be the only winner for our Zotac here. This comes in at 174 FPS, which is above average for both the gigabyte 4070 Super at 166 and our TI at 167. But then it's brought back down to reality for the 1440p testing, 143 FPS for our Zotac, 149 FPS, four gigabyte and 161 FPS for the TI. 
4K tells a similar story, 83 FPS for Zotac, 86 FPS for Gigabyte, and 98 FPS for the TI. Borderlands 3, 1080p, you'll see Zotac coming in at 175 FPS, 3 FPS more for our Gigabyte at 178, and 203 FPS for the TI. 1440p brings in 119 FPS for Zotac, 123 FPS for Gigabyte, and 142 FPS for the TI. Full 4K narrows the gap here a little bit. You'll see that we get 64 FPS for Zotac, 68 for Gigabyte, and 77 for the TI. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, 212 FPS, for the Zotac, 213 FPS for Gigabyte and 215 FPS for the TI. So all within three FPS of each other. Slight increase in separation as we bump up to 1440p, 177 FPS for Zotac, 183 FPS for Gigabyte and 196 FPS for the TI. And full 4K for Tomb Raider, 92 FPS for Zotac, 97 FPS for Gigabyte and 113 FPS for the TI. Looking at Unigen Heaven at 1080p, we're showing 203 FPS for Zotac, 215 FPS for Gigabyte, and 253 FPS for the TI. 1440p brings our two 4070 Supers closer together, 120 FPS for Zotac, and 123 FPS for Gigabyte, followed by the TI at 151 FPS. The gap narrows even more at full 4K. We're just one FPS apart between our Zotac and our Gigabyte models, and still up at the top, is the TI at 63 FPS. So where does all of that data leave us? Well, the best way to make sense of everything we just discussed on an overall average basis, as opposed to a per game basis, is gonna be to look at the average FPS percent change. So we calculate that based on the RTX 4070 Super from Zotac being the baseline and looking at the percent increase in FPS values with our Gigabyte RTX 4070 Super, and that comes in at 4%. So looking at these two GPUs head to head, 4% increase in average FPS in favor of our Gigabyte GPU. Now, looking at our baseline compared to our 4070 Ti Super, you'll see a 22% increase in average FPS. Comparing our Gigabyte RTX 4070 Super to our 4070 Ti Super, you'll see an 18% increase in average FPS. Another way to look at that is the cost percentage or price increase in the performance. How much more is it going to cost you to actually get that added performance? So using our RTX 4070 Super from Zotac as the baseline, it'll cost 8% more to buy your Gigabyte RTX 4070 for, if you remember, a 4% increase in performance. Looking at the 4070 Ti Super, it's gonna cost you 40% more to get 22% boost in performance. And then comparing the Gigabyte RTX 4070 Super to the 4070 Ti Super, it's gonna cost you 29% more to get 18% better performance. So where does that leave us with our Gigabyte RTX 4070 Super? Well, let me share with you some final thoughts. First, only you can decide which GPU you like best out of all of the GPUs out there that you have to choose from. What's the right size for your build? What's the right color? We haven't even talked about performance yet. What about the price? All of that is only something you can decide for yourself. We'll continue to present you the facts, but you'll have to make that decision on your own on a per build basis. Now, for this particular GPU, something we can't quantify, but it's pretty obvious when you start looking at GPU side by side is the build quality and the parts and components here. So look at the size difference, but not so much in regards to form factor, but the heatsink. I mean, look at the heatsink on our Gigabyte GPU versus the heatsink on our Zotac GPU. That's just something, again, hard to quantify, but the materials used in each one, there's gonna be some compromises, right? When brands get their prices really low, they're doing something to get them that low. So anyways, something to consider there. Same with the back, right? When you're looking at GPUs, does it have a metal back plate? Is it using higher quality parts and components? What's going on there? You have to take that into consideration. And then again, due to the sheer size, we have triple fans for cooling with that larger heatsink than just the dual fans on the Zotac. We haven't even talked about RGB yet. If you like RGB, that's gonna be another thing in the gigabyte favor that a lot of budget-friendly cards don't have. But when we're talking about budget again, right here compared to these two, 
it's only 8% more. You're picking up the extra fan. You're picking up RGB on the fans as well as on the Gigabyte logo, the larger heat sink, and I'd argue a nice and better position plug. This one's really hard if you ever have to unplug. You basically have to cram a tool down in there to be able to unplug it. So there's just some little things depending on the size of your card and what you're considering that really go into the experience that aren't quantifiable.